When you start building more comprehensive websites like business listings, job vacancies, or real estate websites, you'll quickly come across the need for creating hierarchical filters to allow your users to easily drill down to the content they're actually interested in. Now, historically, these have been pretty complex to build, but thankfully, combining a tool like Jet Engine with Jet Smart filters and a little planning, while well, we can add them to a site without any need to get our hands dirty delving into any form of code. In this video, I'll be taking you through a demonstration of how to configure and set up a typical hierarchical filter for a fictitious accommodation-based website. But before we start building, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Paul C from WP Tuts, and I've teamed up with Crocoblock to create a series of tutorials on using dynamic jet plugins like Jet Engine and Jet Smart filters. Now, with that out of the way, let's open up the website and take a look at what we'll be creating in this tutorial. If we take a look underneath, you can see I've got my Refine My Search, and this is where we've got our hierarchical search or filter set up. You can see it's broken down to three distinct areas, the country, the city, and the type. And these are linked through to each other. So for example, we choose country, we'll choose England. The city then we'll see we only have London associated with it. Whereas if we come back and choose Wales, you'll see we now have the cities of Cardiff and Newport inside there. So these are linked to each other. And the same goes for the type at the end, which is the type of property. So for example, if we filter this down now and choose Cardiff, you can see we only have one property inside there. And if we open up the type, we only have one type of property in there, which is a hotel. Obviously, if we had more properties in a larger example site, we may have hotels, apartments, those kinds of things. They would be listed if there are records found that match the first two criteria. Now, this is one of those things that I know gets asked a lot how to create these. And with the benefit of using JetSmart filters alongside Jet Engine, it is very, very simple to do. So now that we've seen what it does, let's take a look at how we actually go about building it with those JET tools. Now, the most important aspect of setting this up is making sure you put the groundwork in to make sure that everything is going to work the way you'd expect. So what we need to do is come over into the JET engine section. And from there, we're going to take a look at the taxonomies. So open that up. And inside there, you can see I currently have three different taxonomies. We've got the country, we've got the property type, and the property location, which is exactly what you saw on the front end. Now, if we open one of these up, we'll take a look at property location to start off with. We'll open that up, and you can see there's a standard taxonomy. It's associated with our properties, which is our custom post type. And if we scroll down, you can see there's no meta fields or anything associated with it. The only thing we need to ensure that is done is come into the advanced settings, scroll through until you get to the option that says hierarchical. That checkbox has to be checked on all of the different taxonomies that you want to use inside your hierarchical search. If that isn't the case, things won't work the way you expect them to. So make sure you have that checked. This is one of those things that this will be the biggest cause of problems moving forward if you wonder why it doesn't work. So you've seen we've got the hierarchical switches set to on for all the different taxonomies. Let me just quickly show you now we come through to one of my properties and we'll open that up. Let's just quick edit this and you'll see that each of the properties is associated with both a country, a property type, and a property location. So each one of these has that set up for us just to make sure that all the data that we need to be able to create this multifaceted filter is all set up for us. Okay, so with that side of things done, next thing we want to do is now come over into Jet Smart Filters and we're going to add a new filter in. First thing we're going to do is just Give it a title. We're going to call this hierarchical filters. We're going to give the label the same again, and the active filter label will drop the same in there. Next, we need to choose the filter type. Now, currently working with JetSmart filters, creating this hierarchical search, it will only work with the select filter type. You can't use any other kind of filter type. So bear that in mind when you're creating this. We'll choose the select option. And you can see we have a checkbox that says is hierarchical. So we're going to say yes to that. And you can see now that replaces the standard settings underneath with the filter hierarchy. So you can see without it on, we've got select data source. With it switched on, we've now got the filter hierarchy option. So what we can do now is in the same way as you'd kind of work with repeater regions, we can go in and configure each of the individual filters. So we can open that up. You can see we have label, placeholder, and the taxonomy. And this is why I said you have to have the taxonomy set up and it has to be hierarchical. 
we're now ready to start building the first of our filter set. So the first thing we're gonna do is choose the country. So we're gonna just type in country for the label and the placeholder, again, it's going to be country. Taxonomy, expand that out and all of our taxonomies are listed inside here, including the normal WordPress core taxonomies, things like tags and categories and those kinds of things, and also any custom taxonomies that you created. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the country test option. So that's the first of our filters set up. We now need to choose the second one. So this time it's going to be the city, which is the second part of our filters. So again, we're gonna drop in city for both the label and the placeholder, change the categories over then, and we want to choose a property location. Then the third and final option is gonna be the property type. So again, we're gonna just drop in the title for this. I'll copy that over into the placeholder. And this time we're gonna just choose property type. So those are the three sections for our filter our country, our city, and our property type. Other than that, there's nothing else to do. The placeholder is just what's gonna be dropped into each of those individual filters so people know what to do. Other than that, there's nothing else to it. So we can publish that, and now we're ready to actually take that filter and put it into our archive template. All we need to do now is come over to the template section into our theme builder, and from there, we're gonna choose our property archive. So we'll edit that with Elementor, and there's my template and placeholder ready for our search. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna type in select, and that will find the select filter, which is the widget from JetSmart Filter. So we're gonna drag and drop that into the location that we want. Next thing we do now is select the filter. So you can see there's the hierarchical filters we've just created. So we'll select that from there, and that immediately pulls in the three different filters. So everything is now set up for us. We can test those out, and we can also go through and refine and style these to make sure that everything fits in exactly how we want. So let's take a quick look. This filter is for, what kind of filter is it gonna be used with? Expand that, you can see we have a lot of options. You've got Jet Engine, you've got Jet Woo Builder, Woo Commerce, and those kinds of things. We built this with Jet Engine, so we're gonna say it is a Jet Engine filter. You can see then we can choose to apply type. We can have things like Ajax, page reload, or mixed. I like to use Ajax on this because then when someone makes a change, they immediately see that reflected and the filters start to take effect. However, if you find for any reason this slows things down because you may be on a quite complex site with potentially hundreds or thousands of records, maybe page reload or mixed is a better option. But for this example, I'm gonna leave that set to Ajax. We then have the option to say how this is going to be applied. So you can see it'll apply on a value change. So every time you make any change to one of these filters, it will then reflect that in the search results. But you can, if you want to, change that to click on apply button. Speaking of apply button, you can see we have show apply button. If we select that, you can see we now get the apply filter button on which we can change the text to whatever we want on there to make sure it fits in with exactly what we're looking to achieve. We'll take that off though. Query ID is more to do with Elementor Pro, where you want to name the query, so we don't need to worry about that. If you want to, you can show the filter labels, and you can see that'll pull in those labels that we created when we set up each one of these filters, so the country, city, and property type, but that's already inside the field itself, so we don't really need to put that in there for this example. Next up, we can jump over to the style options, and from here, we can now configure this to make it look the way that we want. So you've got the content positions, we can adjust the select, the label, the button, and the grouped filters. So first of all, let's come down to grouped filters. We can set the position on this for any kind of device. So if we want to set different parameters for desktop, mobiles, and tablets, and so on, we can do that. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna set this up to be line, and you can see that now puts those into a nice straight line. We can adjust any spacing between those, so we're gonna change that and set that to zero because they're all on a nice horizontal line. So that easily allows us to control the grouping. We can come back to our content and we can refine the size of each of these filter boxes. So we can adjust the width on there to make sure that everything sits nice and tidy and fits into our design. So you can see, there we go. That's that side of things done. You can come into the select area if you want to and you can fine tune. You can set the typography for this. You can set the text color. You wanna change any border radiuses. So we can say we want no border radius on there and we may want to put a box shadow on. You can do that if you want to. I'm gonna reset that because I don't like the look of that too much. You can see we can reset the field appearance as well. So we can just make sure that any CSS that's values have been applied, we can reset those to their standard defaults and we can just disable that if we want to as well. So we can configure this to look exactly how we want to. If you have labels available or buttons being used, you can also style and configure those.
But that's basically those things all done. We've set it up, we've inserted it, we've configured it. Let's just test it out now. Let's update this. Hop over to our test page. Let's refresh this to make sure that we've got the latest version installed. And you can see we've got our six different properties available. If we come back up now and we'll just filter these. So let's come down and choose something like Scotland, for example. And you can see we can choose the city of Edinburgh. That gives us two results. And if we open up the property type, you can see we've got an apartment and a hotel. Choose apartment and that will show us just the apartments. Come back out to this and go to England this time. We can choose the city of London and you can see we've only got the option for apartments. Finally, if we come into Wales and we choose Newport, you can see we can choose the hotel and everything is set up and configured and working the way we expected to. So it's not complicated. Hopefully what you can see is it's actually very, very simple and using the power of jet engine alongside jet smart filters and just taking your time to make sure everything is set up and configured correctly just makes the whole process super simple. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you before wrapping up this tutorial, and that is we're not limited to only using hierarchical filters and nothing more. We can add extra filters using JetSmart filters on top of these. So let's just say, for example, we now we can refine it based upon the country, the city and the property type. It would also be nice to be able to refine it even further based upon the price we would pay per night. So for this example, we're ranging from around £80 per night up to 250 So let's take a look at how we can do that. Let's come back over into the admin. I'm gonna come into JetSmart filters again, and from there, we're gonna add a new filter in. And we're gonna basically call this price per night. So let's just add that in. So that's the name of our filter. We'll just copy that, and we're gonna put that in for the label and also for the active filter. So the filter type, let's open that up. And as we can see, we've got a range of different filter options. We're gonna choose the range option, and this allows us to create a nice simple slider, which we can set the minimum and maximum values from. So let's take a look at that. The value prefix, because we're working in the UK, I'm gonna put the pound sign in there so people can see that's the monetary value we're working with. The suffix, we can say per night, so let's put that in there. So people can see this is gonna have a range of values based upon the minimum maximum values we set. We're gonna put a thousand separator in, decimal, that's perfectly fine. We're not gonna worry about decimal points. The minimum value, this is up to you how you want to work with it. And depending upon whether you're using WooCommerce for this, if you're using WooCommerce, you can get that to pull in the values dynamically. Currently, we have to put manual values in if we want to use Jet Engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this off at something like 50 pounds, and we're gonna go up to a maximum of 350. The steps, we're gonna say this is gonna go in increments of 10. And that's basically it. We've now created that simple filter. There's one more thing we need to do. And let's grab the query variable. Now the query variable is basically what meta field are we gonna use these values to check against? Coming back over into our post types and into our properties, this is our price per night section and there's our name stroke ID. So we can simply copy that if we can't remember what the value is and then we can come back into our filter and we can drop that in for our query variable. Once we've done that, we've set everything we need up. So we can simply come up now and hit publish and we are pretty much done. We've got that set up. All we need to do now is go back into our templates and back into our theme builder, and from there, we're gonna open our property archive up and add this new filter into our existing hierarchical filter set. So all we need to do is do a search for range, because that's the filter type we've just created, and we're gonna drag that and drop that underneath our location filters. Then all we need to do is select the filter that we want to use. Now, because we're using a range filter and we've already created a range filter in Jet Smart Filters, all we need to do is click inside here and it will show us just the range filters. Anything else, like for example, where we had the hierarchical filter, that doesn't show because of the wrong filter type based upon the widget we've chosen. So it makes it super simple to work with. So we say price per night, we'll add that in. And as we did before, we need to choose what is the filter for. So again, we're gonna set the value to Jet Engine. And if you wanted to configure any of these, you could do that, including the styling. You can come in and you can configure the styles. All I'm gonna do is duplicate this title and we'll drop that underneath just so we can see what this is for. And we'll just quickly change this and we'll just say price per night. And then we'll just come into style and we'll just adjust that ever so slightly to make it a bit smaller, just so people can see exactly what this filter is for. Okay, so we are done with that. So we'll hit update on there. We'll hop over to our test site and we'll take a look at this in action just to see how easy it is to add these extra filters. There we go. There's our price per night filter. So we can adjust this. So currently it's showing everything because all of those fit into that value. 
So let's just make some changes on here. Let's change this over now to something like 90 pounds per night. And you can see that automatically filters this down. So all of these now are 90 pounds plus per night. And we can still use these filters. So we can say we want to look in England. And you can see currently there's none available in that price range in England. Let's come to Scotland. And you can see we have a couple of options available in Scotland. We could then filter this down based upon the city and also the type. So all of these things now are working in conjunction with each other to create much more comprehensive filters that we can use for any kind of website. Like I say, at the top of the video, this is perfect for things like vehicle sales websites, accommodation websites, holiday websites, and way, way more. But what you can see is it is actually really, really simple to build these filters as long as you take the time to plan things out to make sure that you set yourself up to work with filters in a much more logical fashion when it comes to that point in the build process. But hopefully you can see Jet Smart Filters and Jet Engine in combination with each other make for a pretty powerful way of creating great looking websites alongside powerful filtering and searching options. Now that you've seen how easy it is to integrate these more complex hierarchical filters into your workflow, can you see yourself using Jet Smart Filters in your next project? If you can, let me know in the comments section below because I'd love to get your feedback on what I've covered in this video. And if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the future tutorials for Crocoblock. All of the applicable links for everything I've included in this video are down in that description below. And as always, I'd welcome your feedback and comments, so please drop those in the comments section. As always, my name is Paul C, and until next time, take care.